What's up everybody? Brett here and I'm back today casting another Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer battle. This one should be exciting. It was sent to me as a battle versus Dov plays. I guess he's playing under a pseudonym, Arl Amon. Man, that sounds familiar. Something from fantasy. Don't quite remember, but it's going to be Norska versus Dark Elves. Let's slow-mo it for just a second here to go over the army compositions because the Dark Elf composition in particular is very interesting to me. It's something that I've seen before. It's, it's a lot of cav a lot of skirmisher options but let's see how our buddy here our channel subscriber handles that so a front line of marauders we've got marauder champions with great weapons that's an interesting choice that's an interesting choice they'll beat down just about anything we've got brutes of the hound in the front as well unbreakable and then yeah so marauders and marauder champions flanking brutes of the hound interesting front line will no doubt win but i'm very concerned for him Going up against this much Skirmisher Cav. What does he have to deal with it? Two Marauder Hunters with Javelins. I love these. These are kind of one of my favorite picks in the Norskin matchup. He's got the Skin Wolves in the back and the Beasts of Tashnar who have Anti-Large and Frenzy. They are an amazing tool versus stuff like Dark Riders who are very cheap. Uh, if you can get them on the charge or catch them in the back, you'll have a good time. And then he's got Norskin Ice Wolves and more Skin Wolves. These ones are armored. So 65 speed on those versus... 75 speed on the standard one so you get a bit more punch but you get lower speed and it's a weird match it's a weird grouping it, if i had to guess he's got these two groups like hot group together but the problem is that norsk and ice wolves have 95 speed and skin wolves have 65 so they're not going to be able to travel together very efficiently you're going to want to try and catch something with the ice wolves and then have the skin wolves come in for the one two punch and then there's some more marauders some spearmen here off to the side nice to have a little bit of anti-large and then we've got Wolfric the Wanderer on horseback. Decent choice. He's got all of his abilities. We should be able to see some good Sea Fangs and Hunter of Champions. And then the Shaman Sorcerer with the Lore of Death, Spirit Leech, and it looks like Fate of Buna as well. So, what are they going up against? We saw these two groups of Dark Riders here. No doubt just going to be used to try and keep any type of Hound play or, or Marauder Horseman play away from these units. The Dark Riders with the Repeater Crossbows, we zoom in on them. For those of you who've never seen these guys before. Really creepy. Uh huh. On their like, their horses that they just like need to give them a sandwich or something, man. They are dying. So, and the Pharaoh Manticore, a pretty recent favor favorite choice in the meta. Uh, for a long time, Pharaoh Manticores were absolutely ignored. They were given the rampage effect, and then they were even, you know, harder ignored. Uh, but they've they've come back. I always liked them as a choice. They are highly mobile. You can use them to goon out certain targets. And a Supreme Sorcerer's the Lore of Fire. Fireball is a very spammable ability. Hard to see who he's going after here. Maybe these Skin Wolves, something like that. Fire is extra effective versus units that have regeneration, like the Skin Wolves. So that's a pretty good choice. And we see the Burning Heads as well as uh, the Sword there will you know, help them in a melee fight, which is probably not going to be his goal. Because we see two more Dark Riders there, two more Dark Riders with repeater crossbows. And then a core here that's job is almost completely just to hold. Blackguard of Nagaron, and then three groups of Dread Spears to inundate any chaff, with the Witch Elves looking to probably just, uh, to, you know, drive mad. I forget how they exactly, they call it. I don't think it's Frenzy. What are we looking for? Give them murderous something. I forget what it's called. There it is. Wait, wait, wait. We got it. We're going to get it. It's been a hot minute since I got to play some Total War. Madness of Cain, right? Causes your units to rampage. And it also gives them minus melee defense and speed, so... Let's say Wolfric comes charging in thinking he's going to be a big hero. He's going to get rampaged and he's going to get wrecked by probably the Black Guard of Nagaron. And then let's not forget, last but not least, a unit that I always try to make work, but it's always very difficult. Very cool looking Raven Heralds. So repeater crossbows, but on these like dark Pegasus mounts. And they're very versatile, but they're not... They're not very cost efficient. They're pretty expensive and they almost always end up just getting wrecked. So... They don't have a lot of ammunition either at 16. How much is on a standard unit? 16 on them as well. What happens usually is either they get caught and they get smashed because they're very flimsy, or they run out of ammo and you'll find that because of their small unit number, they don't get many kills. So a frontal charge here from the Dark Riders is going to put some damage on the Marauders, and there's really not much here to stop them from doing that. It's a veteran play, knowing that a unit that's in motion has no charge defense. And, you know, Marauders don't have any charge defense regardless. Uh, but they're not going to be able to get any type of counterattacks 
uh, if they are moving into a position in, instead of charging into attack. And good play, skin wolves coming to counter. I would have to think that one group of skin wolves is probably enough to kill two groups of dark riders. They are anti large, they do have frenzy and regen, and the, the, the standard like attack power, just the weapon strength from dark riders, is very low. Spirit Leech upgraded. Probably not necessary to upgrade it. It just costs more and all you get is a little bit of extended range. And these fireballs are just going to keep murdering the skin wolves. A good juke, but it looks like he's still... No, he's going to get back up. I think. Get back up, buddy. No, he died. Okay, it was just a little bit of a delayed uh, showing there. But these repeated crossbows put a hurt on Wolfric. He's got, you know, bronze shields, not silver. And when he's got his back to these units, he's going to take full damage. Flaming Sword of Ruin? Ah, okay, now I see. That's pretty smart. Giving them uh, Flaming Missile Damage. Oh my god, and Magical Damage? He's tearing apart the Skin Wolves. Alright, I get it now. So a huge increase to their Missile Damage, giving them that Flaming Attack. That's going to do extra damage versus the Skin Wolves. And they just got put down. Now, they haven't lost very many models. They're going to be able to regen most of that. So it's not a big deal. Arcane Conduit going to be refreshing the Winds of Magic there. And now it's just all about trying to get these two lines to meet. Yeah, I think this is a better choice. Once again, all this does is give you an extended cast range. Upgrading it is, is just a waste of Winds of Magic. You're already sitting right next to them. It doesn't do any increased damage. Uh, there might have been a time when it did, uh, but for the longest time that I can remember, uh, just casting it upgraded like that just gives you a longer range. So you could, you know, theoretically cast it on someone who's way out here. And some of the units have now met Marauders fighting with the Dark Riders. These Skin Wolves are just taking a beating from Fireball. Probably not a bad choice. They are the highest value things on the Norskin side of the battlefield. Both of the Skin Wolves, that is. And a big flank looking to go down here. But one unit of Dark Riders being sacrificed. And look at all the units is currently holding up. And veteran play from the Dark Elf here. I don't know if I would throw in the Witch Elves versus Standard Marauders. It's just not necessary. Blackguard. They have charge defense against large, but I think the Marauder Champions, it's hard to know who would win in a 1v1. Blackguard and Nagaran are, are extremely powerful units, uh, but they're not made to fight champions, whereas the champions are made to fight Blackguard. Uh, but they're such a, a much more expensive unit that it's really hard to say. And is that a fade of Buna? Yes, it is. On the Blackguard, going to be killing models, no doubt. And now these Javelins are finally online, at least one group of them is. And it's looking to take on the Feral Manticore, but without any front line left to protect them, uh, they're going to get run into by the Dark Riders. Oh man, come on Skin Wolves, get in there. Your people need you. And a bit of Miss Micro here. He's trying to go around and get this flank, get these rear charges. I can see where his Micro is focused. And that might help him win this front line, but in the end I think he's going to have problems dealing with the mobility. Skin Wolves get a rear charge. These Marauder Champions need to get in here and start killing these Dread Spears. These Marauders should probably be committed to this side of the battlefield in a way to get these Marauder Hunters and pull them out. Spearmen are coming back. Yeah, the Raven Heralds are still online. Beast of Tashnar, let's slow-mo this. I want to watch them get, get bloody, just tearing up these Dark Riders with the Peter Crossbows. This is what they were made to fight, and they're going to do it very well. And if, if this is Dov plays and he's not careful, he's going to lose this entire unit quite handily. And then maybe the second unit also. That could that could help get our buddy back in the game. But these Dark Riders here now have that increased missile damage and fire damage. And that magic damage is also not irrelevant because if they are, the Norskins are in their third tier of their Berserker Rages, uh, they get physical resistance. So that magic damage does bypass the physical resistance. So it's not useless. It's a nice little niche. Not a lot of people think to use... Uh, that spell on ranged units, but it's it's very good for that. I know I don't think to use it all the time on that. I would prioritize using it in big melee blobs, where I was trying to win through sheer attrition, or in very particular instances where I felt like the magic and fire damage would be very relevant. These Black Guard are in perfect condition. They're just holding all day. The Marauders have been rampaged, which is probably better for them. Otherwise, they would just be running. These other Marauders can come in and help. Shaman and Sorcerer is just sitting in a pocket. Finally, these Marauder Hunters... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? Is that it? Huh. 
I don't know. He thinks the battle was not yet over. A bit of a premature ending there, perhaps. Huh. Well? I mean, the... Once again, if this is Dov, he's a veteran player. He has to know when he's beat. I guess he realized he had mismicroed his repeater crossbows in the back there, and he had pretty much given a huge freebie to the Beast of Tashnar. At this point in the game, I think the Beast of Tashnar plus the Norskin Ice Wolves, uh, and maybe the Skin Wolves if they had healed up to this point. Sometimes, don't look so much at these health bars. A lot of times they're very misleading. Uh, they change a bit toward the end. Um, but I think the two most dangerous units to the Dark Elf player were these very mobile wolves and i guess they had he felt like he had no answer for them once the pharaoh manticore went down to the javelins and once some of these dark riders went down to the beast of tashnar who last we looked had 25 kills so i mean at some point they were feasting and i guess his strategy of trying to snipe out high value targets might not have been might not have been super effective the thing about skin wolves if you're going to try and get them with fireballs is that they're very they're a pretty fast moving unit, but they're also loosely packed. And there's either a good chance that you can dodge it, which is what uh, our buddy was trying to do. But there's also a good chance that all you do is kill one model. Which, is that worth it, you know, for six wins of magic? I mean, you could very easily line yourself up down the line of Marauder, you know, champions and get 15 kills with a single cast. And I think in that instance, it probably would have been more cost effective. Yeah, just a little bit of Miss Micro, honestly. That's uh, I think that's all that really stood between the Dark Elf player and victory. Uh, but look at the Bruce of the Hound. We're, we're carving up Spearman, no doubt. Not giving any leeway. Uh, but yeah, so good game. Thanks for submitting this, buddy. I, I appreciate everybody who is a subscriber and who decides to send me their replays. I love to see it against high-level players. Uh, that lets me know two things. One, that the people who subscribe to me really understand Total War, which I appreciate. And I hope that my commentary is either helpful or or uh, just entertaining enough, but also that uh, the community is alive and well when you can get into a match and face, you know, a renowned player like Dob Plays. I've been watching him on tournaments since I've been watching Total War myself, so it's awesome to see a match against him. Hopefully this was the right match. Once again, I have no way to verify, but uh, hopefully you guys know if this is a pseudonym that he plays under if you watch his streams or whatever it is that he does, uh, you'll know. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was fun for me. Uh, I've got plenty more coming up, and as always, y'all, I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys.